Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppets, doing a little bit of a food pairing as well today, or a snack pairing, really. Uh, we're doing some more macro lager, this time from South Korea. And uh, I haven't drunk much Korean beer. Uh, I do love their food, though. So I recently was buying a few supplies for my pantry for cooking, like Korean food, for example. Also some Japanese things, some miso pastes, some mirin. Some sake, I bought some Korean black bean sauce or black bean paste. I bought some gochujang, gochugaru, uh, all these things you'd use for cooking. And a few different other things, also some rice cakes. And then I bought a few different Southeast Asian beers to try and review just because I thought it'd be fun and maybe pair some of them with some food, do some of them fine. But this, I think, is one of the only ones that's actually bruised in its country of origin. And this is from South Korea, and this is Kas Fresh. A beer with a little bit of controversy, controversy apparently, because Gordon Ramsay endorses this beer. And people were a bit uh, astounded by that because of his usual, you know, stamp of quality uh, about food and beer. Or not, maybe not beer, but... He's such, such a big food critic as well, like in all these shows and whatnot. And then people were a bit upset that he liked this beer a lot because this was a macro product or something like, oh, you should talk about small craft beer and stuff. It's okay to like macro beers. Like, <laughs> it's okay. I like them once in a while too. So this, uh, they call this a cold brewed lager. This is the imported version. It's 4.5%. It's brewed in Korea. It's brewed by the or Oriental Brewery, which is owned by AB InBev now. And it's brewed with water, barley malts, uh, starches, hops, and yeast. And the starches is to save some money. So this is starch actually on barley because it's cheaper and it can also lighten up a beer. That's why I like when a lot of modern brewers try to do like Japanese rice lagers, they use like rice to lighten up the beer. Um, so it'll be interesting to try this. I've had only one Korean beer in the past, which was Hite, I think, which I had at a Korean barbecue in the States, uh, a Korean barbecue place in New York. And I got soju as well to mix in. I don't have soju today. So I've got the thing here to taste with it. This is instant tteokbokki. Is that how I say it? Tteokbokki? Tteokbokki? I think that's how I say it. And uh, this is, yeah, it's an instant version by the Yong Pong brand. And it's called Yopoki. And this is the black soybean sauce version, which is a black bean version. And I've made black bean rice cakes, Topoki, a million times. I, I made it actually not too long ago when I was alone with the girls. And it tastes awesome. You fry up the black bean in oil, get it nice and fragrant and nutty. And then there's a lot of different recipes, but like that's like your essential thing. And you need some soy sauce, you need some water, you need maybe some Korean fish cake, some pork belly. Uh, you can add some gochugaru if you want it spicy, some sugar as well, uh, maybe a little bit of chicken bouillon powder, some MSG. There's many things you can put in and make it taste fucking awesome. It's not a super healthy food, but it's really good. Uh, I really like it. I also like the classic tteokbokki with the spicy sauce, but uh, the black bean is also quite nice and uh, very, very savory. So let's try the beer first. So Kas looks like any other lighter lager. This is a pale lager. It's very pale. It's golden in color, golden yellow. It's got a white head. Let's take out the aroma on this one. Smells a lot like what I think of when I think of American lighter lagers, this is not a light lager, but but that like American pale lager smell where it's like kind of sippy, uh, at least some are, is like maybe this is more sippy than those. There's definitely some hop character to this, like a grassy note. Sippy, bright, slightly cereal grainy. Not a lot going on. It smells super refreshing though. Let's try it. Cheers. Definitely not a lot going on, but you know what? I don't hate this. <laughs> I would love to drink a few of this. <laughs> you know, once in a while, I really like beers like this. I'm actually really like these craft brew versions, these like cold brew, super frosty or rice lagers, all these things that where it's like just really like crispy lagers and not too high EBV. 
They're just so refreshing and crushable. This is really, really, really crushable. It's super clean. There's no off flavor, which is crazy. This is coming all the way from Korea. Very snappy, very light, kind of grassy. There's a little bit of a sweet cereal graininess to it, but it's just like, just a little bit of a light syrupy note. It's not as much as like these rich kind of corn syrupy flavors you get in some American lagers. It's just like a light sweetness. And then it's like crackery, kind of light watery texture, very high carbonation, which is nice. But it just makes this beer like super crushable. In the heat in Korea with like something really spicy, this would just be like, you just hammer this. Yeah, this is uh, for sure also better than the export lagers actually I had recently from Sweden. Let's try and pair it with this instant topoki. Is it gonna be as good as my homemade? I am pretty sure it isn't, but let's try it here. So instant topoki. You can probably hear it, all that chewing. Mm. What I love about Tabuki, these freaking rice cake cakes, their texture is one of the best things in the world. They're super chewy, super chewy and squeaky in the mouth. And then the black bean sauce, to be honest, it's got no way near the same amount of flavor if you make this from scratch. <laughs> this tastes more like MSG with a little bit of a soy black beanie nuance than anything. But it was it also everything came from a powder. It's also lightly spicy with it, which is nice. Yeah. This is a fantastic pairing. I'm getting a little bit of a green apple vibe right now. It just goes hand in hand. Like it just works. I wouldn't mind though pairing this with something a bit more flavorsome, maybe a bit more interesting. Like it could definitely also be very good with something light and hoppy, like a pale ale or pale wheat ale actually. Or a hoppy lager. But man, this is actually a really good combo. I actually like this. <laughs> I like this a whole lot more than I thought I would. Past the, the experience of drinking this, this is like the, I had a, I was sick this week and then I had a very extensive couple of brew days after being sick, not being completely over it. And now I'm well, I was well again yesterday. What a nice way to finish a bit of a stressful week. Some topoki, nice and spicy, like medium spice I'd say. And then a fresh lager. Shippy lager. I, this is a nice combo. I can't wait to go to Japan. Hopefully that will be next year. Korea, I want to go to sometime as well, but I can't wait to drink beers like this in Japan with the food and the isekaias. I have a feeling it's going to be great pairings. <laughs> Although it's a lighter beers. I would recommend trying this. If you're not up for making the pocket from scratch, get this. It's really easy. And you can get to experience the texture and think, okay, I want to try and cook it myself. Like I don't make the rice cakes. I just buy them pre-made, but everything else I make myself. Oh, of course, besides, of course, not the paste. Heck, I don't ferment black bean paste. It just works so well together, man. This is a, an amazing food pairing. Like super crisp white lager, just light cereal grain flavor. Grassy hoppiness, sippiness, highly carbonated, clean, crisp. Bitterness is super low. It's maybe in the tens max. It just really works with this. Like you can, and with the spice and everything. Like I'm gonna finish this, no problem. And I'm gonna actually wish I had another bottle just to crack and, and, and have with this. That's uh, surprising. I don't wanna bet this is rated two point something on untapped because it's a macro beer. But often beer is all about the setting and the scenario. This setting right here is exactly how you'd want this. I'm glad I bought this to pair with it. I should have made some homemade tteokbokki instead, but I'll do that sometime and try and pair it with some nice light beer. Ah, 
What a way to start the weekend. Super simple beer, nice food. There we go. In terms of the grade, focus here. I think I'm gonna go like 80. <laughs> like, I wouldn't mind drinking this again. Maybe even 82. Like, I wish there was one in this bottle. This just fit the bill right now. Yeah, around that. Like, it's not the best beer in the world. But with this food and this setting and like a long week and everything, works. The Yopoki instant one, like I would say, if you're scared about trying to cook this, get this and then you can see if you want to cook it. But and you can like, if you make it yourself, you can also tune in the spice level yourself. Like it's definitely got some heat. If I serve this for my mom, it would be way too much heat. But I think, you, you definitely feel it's an instant noodle product, but it's no way near as good. Like when you have it with the fucking rice cake and the fish cakes and, and, and pork belly and everything, it's just like, oh my lord, it's such awesome comfort food. But yeah, if you guys had a chance to try Cas or Tabaki, let me know if you thought of either the dish or the beer. And as always, please comment, subscribe. I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no charge. That was really, I could feel it building. But if you guys have cast let me know what you thought of it. I hope you enjoyed this little food pairing video. And as always, please comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, Twitter, and Instagram, and give the video a thumbs up. Enjoy and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. I've got to show you how these look like after cooking. I ate them already. <laughs> and say cheers and nothing. And see you guys in the beer reveal. Mm.